Carl and Damon here from Gains, Brains and Headbanger Life, GBHBL.com for short. And you know what it is. It is, of course, Final Fantasy Unlimited, our review talk through of each episode of the Final Fantasy Unlimited TV show. This is episode number 19, I Meeting with Clear. That is the title of this episode. And it kind of gets us into a nice little run now where we don't have too long to go. We just followed episode 18. Uh, a very odd episode, but a very cool episode with a very Final Fantasy battle and things like that. And there is a bit of a vibe that now, well, put it simply, things are going to ramp up and race forward at a pace that's hilariously bad for the show, but tells you quite clear from a writing perspective, we're out of time. And we need to try and wrap this up because suddenly we don't have the season that we want, wanted previously. Yeah, it's it's definitely a rush. You know, it's like what well, three or four episodes left, and literally just all piled into like it's it's just it's it's proper rushed here. Yeah. It really is. But for now, we are still stuck in peace ocean puzzle, and on the ship, all appears calm out there. But everyone is in high alert, regardless. As they sh- at this stage, as they should be, right? Because it's kind of like every freaking moment something's happening. But yeah. I and you are walking around the ship and get into an argument, but both are startled by some sort of creature outside that takes on the form of I's face. Initially scared, I studies it and finds that it mimics her facial movements, uh, mo- mo- movements before it drops out of view to be replaced by a trippy version of her face. You is amused by I's reaction, and outside the creature continues to mock her with over-the-top facial expressions. It's silly, fun, very, uh, very anime yeah, yeah, definitely, yes. You tries to control I, but you end up in a scuffle, resulting in her falling backwards, hitting a button that opens the window, and then falling through it and out into the ocean. Why does that button exist? <laughs> uh, it sits mystery ship, and I so... Yeah, I guess there is that, I guess. Uh, but of course, this isn't a normal ocean because initially you might think, well, the moment that window's open, water rushes in. But, you know, this show, it's not normal. This is not normal water. It's actually more like a portal. And when you tries to look for her, all he sees is a school of impression fish switching from eyes, face to lips. Uh, after that odd introduction, of course, it's Fabland. She briefly recaps the previous battle and talks of a time of trials. So I is sinking, but emerges to land softly in a new land. She acknowledges that the ocean is on the sky, which I thought was a cool touch. Listen, I like the trippy. I think the whole ocean puzzle thing allowed them to be as weird and wonderful as they possibly could be. There are almost no rules. So because of that, they took advantage of it. And I'm actually OK with this level of oddness. It's very um, it's very it's, it's very Final Fantasy weird. Yeah, well, I mean, I think you said it like um, ages ago. Like, this is what a Final Fantasy series should be about—a big cube and different levels—and it, it, it fits perfectly with any Final Fantasy game you play. Yeah, I really enjoyed. I did enjoy the first half of the season with the kind of following the train along and that aspect. But I think the second half, stuck in the cube in the puzzle, the ocean puzzle, is is more my jam. Mm. Uh, yeah, so. Before, uh, after that, we cut to Peace holding a piece of Omega and bragging about the success of the puzzle. He sends out a recovery team of monsters to continue searching all the cube for more pieces. Okay, this is this is classic Final Fantasy confusion, a uh, Final Fantasy limit confusion. I thought the point of the ocean puzzle was to keep them trapped to eventually fall and be consumed by chaos. Now it seems like he's keeping them trapped so that he can search for pieces of chaos um, or pieces of Omega. I don't get that. Yeah, it's it's almost like the writers got confused themselves and like they, they forgot what they'd done in their previous episodes and then they just thought, oh, we'll, we'll go forward with this. I feel like they got confused between Omega and Chaos. And like, mm. basically, we said this before, why are there two? Just one. It's Chaos, one, yeah. Omega is the big bad monster and they're trying to collect pieces of him to unleash, right? It's as simple as that. Where, but by bringing Chaos into it and saying that like you can have chaos as a thing that the Duke spreads, but not as a not as an entity. Like I, I know we've discussed this yeah. in previous, so we're not going to go too far into it here. But my God, it can be very frustrating. Yeah. 
Uh, meanwhile, on the ship, you and Lisa are being told as to why they can't go after I. The problem relates to the fact that the ship, Jane, can't fly. And the bottom of the ocean is the sky. However, Chobie can fly. So that's you's plan. Like you thinking with his feet there. He's, he's been around. He's been in this, in this world a while now. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, I has been wandering a barren landscape and exhausted. She asks Poshy Pocket for something to contact the others, but it ends up spitting out some chocolate bars, which she is happy to have, but angrily shouts at it for not giving her what she wants. Scared, Poshy Pocket spits up fruit in her, and she hears something laughing at her. Looking up, she sees a strange individual watching and laughing at her. I, being I, shouts at the person who comes down and apologises. Okay. Are you ready to get confused? Because, oh my goodness me. The person is wearing some sort of blue suit with a blue shroud. When I tries to touch it, he pulls back fearfully, claiming that if she touches him, he will break her. Why? No time to find out if several huge monsters attack. I is knocked away and the monsters turn their attention to the blue person, but it can't handle them either. I begs Poshy Pocket for a weapon and it spits out a banana peel. She's not happy, but ends up dropping it and slightly causing one of the monsters to slip. I thought that was funny. Because when it spat out the banana peel, my thinking is, okay, well, how Poshy Pocket works is it gives you things that you don't think you need, but can actually help you. So when it spat out the banana peel, I was like, okay, the monster's going to slip over. It'll all, it'll all get knocked out and killed or something. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, all it does is actually just make one slip over and then it all just carries on again. So it actually is pointless. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> I end up running to the blue person and touches him, which causes the monster to fly back and I to be transported elsewhere. Inside a cave, I speaks with a person who reveals the monsters came for them. They claim that they're here looking for their lost brothers. I offers her a hand and introduces herself, and the blue person says that they're called Clear. Clear wonders why they didn't break I when she touched them and thinks it's got something to do with the flying water clothes they're wearing, holding their powers at bay. Uh, as Clear describes the power, I says that it reminds her of Omega, and Clear reveals that they are Omega. Dun, dun, dun. Or, what? What? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if, if if you're just like turning on this TV show, if this was like on now and you turned on, you'd be like, what in the hell is going on? You'll be so confused. And 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 we we've seen like eighteen, nine episodes, and it it, it, it confused me when I when, when I first saw it. And yeah, it still confuses me now. That's the thing. I don't <laughs> have. I mean, it will explain itself better. But this is such a rushed, jammed in. We we need to do this to create this sort of ending part more than anything else. Mm. I was I was actually annoyed when this happened because I was like, stop doing that. Stop throwing in more new confusing things. You've yeah. set everything up. Why do you need to now add an extra layer of confusing new elements? The thing is that they, they, they didn't actually didn't didn't actually need this character. Yeah. It, it could have been completely avoided and just maybe work more on a final ending with this episode with an extra episode. It gives them a lazy out because basically Killer becomes this good version of Omega that you can yeah. utilize at the end to be a MacGuffin, so to speak. It's basically a lazy out rather than just writing an ending that could have been a bit more sensible. It's like, oh no, if you create this powerful being, that's good, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Pierce has contacted the old tyrant and reveals that he's chasing Claire and he plans to get hold of them. Back with I, she's confused about this piece of Omega as Claire is nice. But asks if the other pieces she's encountered were Claire's brothers. Meanwhile, Lisa and you are on Chobie search for I, and you is despondent about not finding her and blaming himself. Someone else is looking for her, though. It's Kaze, because he's now suddenly in this episode. Kind of been actually saying that Kaze's kind of been pushed to the side a little bit re yeah. in recent time. There's a sense that I don't think they really knew. And maybe, again, it was a problem with the rushed ending, that maybe they had a longer plan for Kaze. When that, that all fell apart, it became a whole, oh, well, we don't really have anything now until the end. Mm. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of okay, because obviously we, we discussed again over like the first 10 to 15 episodes that it's so predictable. You know, he pulls out the MAGA gun, the, the MAGA gun he, he does his little soil thing, and then he, he, yeah. they, they win. So now like yeah. the last, I don't know, three or four episodes, we haven't really seen that. 
So it's it is something different. But yeah, it wouldn't surprise me that like you said. No, I do agree. I, I'm glad we're not just doing the Magan has moved or the you know and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Carso's fan of an Anskin. Clear tells I about how Omega was once one. Well, we know that. Then separated and scattered across Wonderland. Okay, I follow you. Right. Okay. Um, that's fine. They slept in crystal form, still with the eggshell. That I understand. And those that have awakened are now trying to reconnect to the others so Omega can be whole again. I can follow this. Yep, this is yep. all good. It's not that Clear wants to destroy. It's the fact that their existence is destruction. Oh, my God. That is a straightforward explanation for Omega. It yep. isn't. like I almost see it like Sin. I am comparing Omega to Sin now. Sin wasn't, and Sin, by, if, for people that don't know, is the final, not the Final Fantasy X bad guy, but an extra sort of layer in that. But Sin isn't a bad thing. It's a tool to be used. It just exists, and its existence causes destruction, you know? And I, yeah. I, that, so I, I, that's my comparison. Clear asks about you and reveals that they're jealous of I as her existence isn't detested and she doesn't break everything. I is sad, but decides to ask Clear to come with her and help them. Hopefully on route they can find his brothers too. And this time Clear takes her hand. This is this is this is how you do a bit of a story that makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hilariously though, here's Kaze, and he is like, no, nah, mate, I am not, I am not, I am not this thing's friend, as he's pointing the Magan at. Clear. I stands in the way, but Kaze is like, I don't care. I'm going to shoot this thing. I <laughs> am all, I am all in for Kaze being a dick. Yeah. However, before the standoff could end, the monsters fall before attack, and Kaze is forced to turn and fight them. And this gets the attention of Lisa and you in the air. Clear is able to fly I out of the way of the monsters, but one hits them, causing the Omega power to activate. I falls, but is caught by Lisa and you, who quickly turn around and head back to the ship. Clear's power is unleashed, and it destroys the entire cube. And I was like, okay, that's a good showcase of the Omega power and how it works. It, it, it's also um, a good way to get them out of the cube, too, I suppose. I was a bit like, oh, I'm sure Kaze's fine, though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Peace is amazed by what he witnessed, but the old tyrant isn't happy. Back on the ship, I comes around and you apologises. I tells them that they have to stop fighting as they're all they have left. I think this is a really good scene between the pair where they're kind of like, look, we've lost our parents. We 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 we, we kind of have to stop fighting because that was that was that was close. He th he thought he really lost her. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We also see Kaze sitting in the corner, so obviously he got out okay. Okay. I still has Clear's glove and tells the others that it's flying water and it stops Omega's power. Uh, the episode ends with I wondering if she will ever see Clear again. Spoiler, she will. Um, and uh, the whole flying water thing drives me nuts. But you know what? Aside from it being annoyed that Clear was introduced, I think this is a solid episode that is way more less action oriented, way more sort of setting up the ending more than anything else. But you know what? Considering what we got in the previous episode, I think this kind of makes sense. I'm okay with this one. It feels like the story is going somewhere. Yeah, I, I mean, overall, it was, it was a strong episode, you know, and I think we have had many strong episodes of the show, despite the confusions. So, for clarity, folks, who watch this series, but maybe don't watch the other ones, we also do talk throughs of things like Viva Pinata, Donkey Kong Country, um, The Legend of Zelda TV show, uh, Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, all of this stuff where basically there is no consistent story. It is just episode, throwaway episodes after throwaway episodes. I think why we enjoy this one so much because it is a mess. It is a mess and it is flawed mm -hmm. as hell. But I think the reason why we enjoy it so much is because we have a story being told over several episodes over a season so it's not it's not throwaway what happens in this yeah. episode will affect what happens in a future episode and so on that makes it more enjoyable yep yeah, definitely all right that's episode 19 i meeting with claire got any thoughts on this one you want to let us know drop them in the comments thank you very much for watching if you'd like to see more content like this please consider hitting the subscribe button button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website where reviews, news and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, 
Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.